rahmatullah guys what is going on we have another how i learn arabic episode from one of the andrews institute students in the program of arabic like an arab now this student he's a special student because he's one of the first i think from the first 10 students that ever joined andrews institute about one year and, and so ago and uh and since then he's stuck to the program Allahumma Barik, he came into the program with literally like, I remember in the beginning, the weekly conversational sessions, me trying to speak to him only in Arabic so he can get used to it. And him not understanding anything. Like I would just have to say it in English until Alhamdulillah, he got used to it. Right now, Alhamdulillah, in, in, uh, in the weekly conversational sessions, he makes new students feel like they are, you know, feel bad basically, like they're not advanced and they that they uh that they not as you know they are not as proficient as uh as uh as you know other students when it comes to speaking and whatnot so uh so alhamdulillah i hope you guys enjoy his uh his journey and how and how he's going so far now keep in mind that he's still on module number two out of uh out of sorry module number two yeah out of three modules and uh and um and yeah, even though he's still in module number two, he is, alhamdulillah, able to speak right now, to understand most of what is being said in Arabic, to uh, to just take the classes all in Arabic, literally, all in classical Arabic. So uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. And I uh, apologize again for not being as responsible as uh, as I would like to put in this, the stories of the students out there. But... Uh, but yeah, it's a hustle. But alhamdulillah, I hope you guys appreciate this uh, this episode. And, um, and yeah, let's get straight into it. Alhamdulillah, so, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How is everyone doing? Welcome to all the viewers to another episode of How I Learn Arabic with my brother, Tierno. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you, bro? Wa alaikum assalamu wa Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, barakallah fiqh. Tayyib, so, um, so let's go straight into the point based on the experience that we have gained with the other episodes. People, they like to go, you know, to hear straight away the, the story. So um, so just tell us a little bit, give us a little bit of background about yourself. Uh, you know, where you're from, what you do, and uh, so we can uh, so we can get some context, basically. Hey, no. My name is Cherno Jallo. I'm from, originally from Guinea. I uh, came to America when I was around 14 years old. And I live in Brooklyn right now, and I just graduated from college. Uh, yeah, four-year college. I got my bachelor's degree, and yeah, so it was like just started learning the Arabic language in my sophomore or in my, actually in my junior year of college. That's when I started learning the Arabic language, and then I, you know I came into this program like with no 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 background in Arabic language except that you know reading and writing, because you know as all, all of us Muslims you know we learn how to read and write uh, as kids you know so I know how to read the Quran. But then I, I didn't understand anything from the Arabic language. And like literally like when I came in the program, I didn't know anything. So I did actually uh, kind of took like a class, like a YouTube. Uh, I watched like some videos on YouTube from like a sheikh, not like a sheikh, but like a teacher. I think a lot of people who actually want to learn Arabic language you probably know this guy. It's like a guy, he's Indian, he's from, he actually used to teach in Toronto. Even uh, uh, Hanan was talking about this guy. I used to watch him like he was teaching the, the, Medina, the Medina book. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like watching for like maybe like a few weeks before I actually started uh, learning about this. Uh, I heard about this program. When I actually went in the program, I've been following you before, like, you know, you started the program. So, you know, I've been following you like you were actually at that time doing, you know, the Amazon FBA thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, checking you out uh, and seeing like, you know, what you, what, what you were doing. And then like I saw one time in your story that you posted that you have like an Arabic program. And then that, you know, you just, you know, that, that was like in like the, the testing phases, you know. So, you know, I just kind of like replied like, I'm like, wow, you know, I guess I want to learn the Arabic language because at that time I just like had started practicing the religion, you know, yeah. uh, I just like started, I wanted to learn more about Islam because I was like watching some tafsir videos and like I saw how deep like the Quran was, how the understanding of the Quran was, how important it is with the Arabic language. So I, I told myself, you know, uh, if I want to learn the Arabic language, if I want to understand this Quran, I have to learn the Arabic language. I was also watching like some videos of a Sheikh and Miss, I think everyone knows him, Sheikh Muhammad. Al Sharawi. 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 Al Sharaw
and I tried looking more videos of him, but I couldn't find any more English. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was like, man, if I really want to understand what this chef is saying, because he, the things he was explaining, the Quran, the way he was explaining it, it was really, you know, deep. So I was like, yeah, I need to learn the Arabic language if I really want to, you know, understand mm-hmm. this. But, you know, that's why, you know, I just came in and like, I started, I uh, like, you know, I want to join the program. And then I just started my journey. Alhamdulillah. No, alhamdulillah. That's actually, uh, that's actually interesting when you said that you just kept looking for more translations, but but you can't find any more. And I feel like that's that's the situation when you really want to seek knowledge, like know more and go deeper into knowledge and Islamic knowledge. You always feel like now, yeah, you in the beginning there's a lot of translations for the most basic stuff, but then the more you go deeper, it's like. You get stuck like, oh, Subhana, why is this book not translated yet into English? Why is this book? And yeah, it's, it's always, um, you know, you always get, get uh, you always, I mean, stay short on, on basically uh, knowledge if you don't learn the Arabic language. <laughs> Taib, so, uh, so you give us a lot, of, uh, a lot of information, alhamdulillah. Now, uh, what would you say that was your, uh, your experience with the program when you... When you start, because I remember when you started in the weekly conversational sessions, uh, yeah. it was literally like I couldn't even talk to you. In, <laughs> yeah. I would have to just say it in English at the end. So yeah. uh, and right now, Alhamdulillah, you are um, you are understanding most of what's being said in Arabic. And if you don't understand a word, you just you are able to ask in Arabic what that word means or what is mm-hmm. the context of that word. So what was the whole, you know, what was the whole uh, experience like? Since the okay, beginning. So, yeah. So when I first joined, you know, the program, like I could literally not even say one word, you know, in Arabic, nothing. I remember last time I was like watching like one of my first, you know, weekly conversation sessions. Cause you know, like I heard a brother was talking about, he was saying like, you know, oh, I'm not making any effort in the language. So, you know, I just kind of like went back and I watched the video and I sent it to him. I was like, you know, uh, this was me. Like, you know, literally like you asked me something basic in like, it, I, I forgot what kind of word it was, but like when I saw it, I was like, wow, how come I didn't know this word? You know, like, like literally, you had to like, you know, repeat it over and over and over again for me to understand because literally, I didn't understand like zero what was going on, you know, mm-hmm. in that thing. But so then, uh, I just kind of like, you know, uh, as it, I went on, went, went to the program, and then I just uh, learned more words because I think pretty much for Arabic, uh, what you need is just vocab, you know, because mm-hmm. you know a lot of people grammar is important, but I think to just get started. I think vocabs is good. You know, I know a lot, there's a lot of people who might say, you know, like, you know, don't start with vocabs. But I think personally, I, I like this thing, this method, because, you know, once I have words, I can at least say something, you know, even though my grammar might not be good, someone can correct me. But yeah. still, at the end of the day, I can still get my way around and tell people, you know, what I want to say. Even at the end of the day, even though might, there might be some gra- uh, grammatical mistakes, at the end of the day, I still get my point across. So, you know, as I started to learn more words and everything and started memorizing and practicing the weekly conversation, which really allowed me to practice because, you know, it puts you on the spot. You know, uh, it's like there's no way out. You have to speak to, to get your way out. So, alhamdulillah, now, right now, everything that, that we talk about in the weekly conversation, I understand everything. Like, most everything, except, you know, like you said, a few words that I might just ask. Like, everything that's going on, I just understand it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, uh, when I look back from before, and now I'm like, wow, subhanAllah. You know, sometimes you may think that you're not making any progress. But when, when you look back from where you were at the beginning and from where you are right now, you can see that, you know, a lot has changed. A lot, a lot has changed. Yeah. No. Now, it's actually interesting what you said about, you know, at least you can get your cross. Up, uh, I, can, I, I mean, you can get your point across when you have yeah. vocab. Because there's this, uh, this known uh, in the, you know, in the linguistics world, this known uh, proverb that says, um while without grammar very little can be conveyed without mm. vocabulary nothing can be conveyed like yeah. i mean if you don't even know how to say you know me go there uh, yeah. you don't even have these three words there is not even grammar in there but the person understands oh you want oh you want to go there okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i will help you so uh so i mean you know for the person who haven't gone through this process, through this uh, uh, way of learning, it might look like, okay, should I do the, the grammar uh, approach? Should I do the, the vocab approach? Should I? But once you are in and you actually try it out, it's like, subhanAllah, this actually makes sense. You know, like just, I just need to keep building my vocab to the point where I might read something and I don't, I don't have any 
I don't get stuck on any word. I know all the words. I, I hear a conversation. I hear. I understand all the words that are being used. So Alhamdulillah. So what would you say it was? Um, it was the most difficult part because I. I mean, I know. And Allahumma barik you. You was. Uh, you was uh, pretty consistent. But for many students, the most challenging thing is the is just staying consistent really because i mean there is no secret to it the more you memorize vocab the more yep. able you are to speak to understand to so what would you say was the the most difficult thing and the thing that helped you to to stay uh to stay focused i think it's like kind of like you know when when the program starts like you know you start talk, telling to us talking to us about you know like uh the mindset like you know what kind of mindset you should have how you should go, like, you kind of give us a lot of resources where we can organize our work, like, you know, like, a calendar things, and, like, everything with, like, the, you know, the duas that, you, you know, that you give us, and all of those sorts, you know, this really helps, but I think also, uh, the things that you talk about also is, you know, self-discipline, you know, I think, I, I feel like you have to be self-disciplined, I choose, you know, self-discipline over motivation, because, you know, motivation, it goes up and down, you know, we don't feel motivated to things, but even though sometimes you might not feel motivated to something, once you're self-disciplined, you know, you have to do it regardless, no. You know, so I think, you know, some more people, they have to be self-disciplined, you know, when it comes to the program. And, you know, I should have, like, a schedule. So what I used to do before is, like, I used to try every week. I would just do, like, one lesson every week. So I started by two, but I was like, you know, this is not going to work out for me, you know, because I was still in school, you know, I had a lot of classes. So mm -hmm. I had to find, like, something that fit inside of my schedule. So I told myself, you know, maybe, like, uh, Monday I would watch, like, a, like, you know, just a lesson. I would watch it. And then on Tuesday or Wednesday I would write it down. And, like, you know, between Thursday and Friday I would just memorize the words. And then Saturday and Sunday, I would just take the test, you know. So, like, the whole week, I kind of, like, you know, organize it where I was able to, like, you know, watch the lesson, write down the words, memorize it, and also come to the test and take it. So, you know, once you need to have, like, you know, a way to, like, you know, uh, kind of organize yourself. And then you have to, for example, you know, you have to know, like, what is your goal. Like, you know, if you really want to learn the Arabic language, then you have to, you know, force yourself. And then that means, you know, taking some uh, sleeping for less hours, you know, even if you have to do that. You have to make some sacrifices, you know. You have to make a lot of sacrifices you really want to get to, you know, to get to your goal. Mm -hmm. Taib, so let's get into the logistics. How, because many people, they ask, okay, I don't even know if with my schedule or with my responsibilities, whether it's work, whether it's children, whether whatever it might be, uh, you know, whether it's a stay-at-home mom, whether it's a brother who works 12-hour shifts. So how many hours would you say that you was able to put in which allow you to have this progress i mean i know you said uh did you have any day off or how many hours yeah, I, was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. actually you know have i had you know saturday and sundays off you know but even though i had saturday and sunday off that doesn't mean i was not putting in some hours during the week i would just mean i would put in like less hours but i was still putting some hours you know to work so you know i kind of like you know a lot of people they have you know it kind of depends on the person because you know for example some people once you're married you know it's kind of like different because you know you have to give rights to your wife and or your husband and your kids. You know, you have to give them their rights. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can still squeeze in some few hours, you know. Like, no one can say they don't have, like, at least 30 minutes that's free or, like, mm -hmm. an hour that's free when they're not doing anything. Even if that means, you know, cutting off social media, cutting off, you know, television. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really watch TV, like, you know, and I also try to stay away from social media. That time, I think I use that time to put into, like, you know, uh, the Arabic language because, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, like, make some sacrifices, you know. Uh, at least you have to, you know, try... Everyone has 30 minutes or an hour, you know, where they can put in some work, you know. For example, just that I just mean maybe let's say if you work, you know, on the, uh, the weekdays, that doesn't mean that you cannot take like 30 minutes or an hour, even like when you're at work or you're on a break. You, when I used, I actually, when I used to be working, I used to bring, you know, my kitab with tabid, where all, all the words are, I used to bring it with me, no. you know. I, I launched, Do you have it example. around? The kitab with yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I have it around. Can you show it? Yeah, uh, it's right here. I like have a lot of papers in here. This is kind of like how it is. So, so for those who don't know, Kitab al is basically the is pretty much a dictionary we build along the way going through the program, and all the words the that yeah. the person memorizes. Yeah, so this I used to bring this with me. You know, I have like a order with me. Mm -hmm. So I have it right here. I have everything in here. I used to bring it with me actually. You know, when I was at work. No. And when I have some free time, for example, at lunch, I would just, you know, uh, just review it, you know, constantly review it. No. So, you know, you can always make some time, you know, to, to do this, you know, 30 minutes. And then, you know, once you have free time, for example, on the weekend, just put in more hours. That's going to, like, compensate for the hours that you're getting have during the whole week. 
Yeah, yeah no. so I think that's that's the way for people to do it. No, and I think also, for example, yeah, for young people, young if you're young, like there's no excuse for you, man. Mm-hmm. Like you, you should use this time actually to actually before you get married or before something else happened before mm-hmm. you can use to use this time right now because you have a lot of free time, you know. And then you know, for example, you know, at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell us about you know uh, how to like you know use your free time before you get busy, you know. Mm-hmm. So for so the young people, like you should have no excuse, you know. You have a lot of free time right now, like me. So you have to, you know, use these hours, you know, to compensate for your because you don't have a lot of obligations yet, you know. So now is the time to do it. No, definitely, definitely. Plus, I think, uh, as you said, I mean, pretty much all you said could be summarized to just make it part of your life. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, and that's what I, I, I tell you guys all the time to just optimize your whole life towards the goal that you're trying to to achieve i mean it doesn't make much sense to perhaps you know have every day uh a meeting with all your friends to just sit down and drink tea or watch sports or whatever it might be if that's not really something is going to help your your akhirah then just start deleting all those stuff of your life because those doing those stuff it makes you say Oh, I don't have time. But if you really look at what you are actually doing throughout the day, you realize that, well, I don't really need to be doing this. Well, I don't really need to be doing that. I'm just doing that because whatever it might be. So Alhamdulillah, definitely making a part of your life, it helps uh, It helps a lot. So what would you say right now uh, to someone who, who might be watching this and he's saying, uh, and he's saying, yeah, but subhanAllah, you know, I don't know. Like you always have that. There is always a a pattern when you are in a habit routine or in the rat race, as they say it, that it needs, there should be something that happens to impactfully make you stop and, and, you know, get out of your routine and, and, and literally just give time for yourself to think like, okay, subhanAllah. let me look at what is important for me to do, what is not important. And I realized that, wow. Actually, learning Arabic is something that is really important for me in my life. So, so okay, let's do it right now. But most of the times that only happens when there's something that happens in your life that mm-hmm. makes you stop from the routine and, and actually makes you start thinking and, and reorganizing your whole life. So what would you say to the person that is in that routine who doesn't even like, tafit, as they say in Arabic, tafit yaminan wala shimalan. He just keep going in that routine. What would you tell them that, um, you know, uh, in terms of like, why would they want to start learning Arabic and based on how it helped you on how or how it changed your, uh, just your Iman and your, your way of, yeah. uh, of life? I would say, I would just, you know, personally talk to myself, you know, like I speaking for myself, like before, like, you know, I just started like, you know, practicing the thing. It was like, I would say it was probably like two years ago. You know, I, I already know, you know, how to, you know, I always used to pray, you know, and everything, like, you know, I had the basics down because, you know, my parents, you know, they teach me everything. Mm-hmm. But then after the basic, like, I didn't have anything else, you know, like, I didn't know anything else about Islam, except that, you know, I have to pray, I have to fast, you know, I, I need the five pillar of Islam, you know, basically. Mm-hmm. But then beside that, I didn't know anything else. So, you know, like, and then two years ago, like I was saying, and then I just, you know, I just started to uh, learn about it then. Like, I don't know why, you know, mm-hmm. like, people always ask me, you know, what happened? Because a lot of people would say, did something happen to you in your life or anything? I'm like, no, nothing happened. You know, I think last time when we were talking about, like, you know, the, the dictator we did yesterday about, like, you know, how, like, the, the fingers, the Hadith Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how, like, the, the heart of the person is between the two fingers of Allah, mm-hmm. like, he changes it how he wills. No. You know, that's what, I felt that Hadith because I feel like that's what happened to me personally, you know. Mm-hmm. I just started learning about the deen, like, it wasn't any tragic moment that happened for me, you know. But then since I started learning this, I was like, subhanAllah, man, I guess my iman increased, you know, when I pray right now or when I read the Quran, I understand a lot. I, mm-hmm. Before I, ne- I never used to understand anything, you know. When I'm listening listen to Quran, when I listen to uh, when I'm praying, like uh, right now when I go to the masjid, subhanAllah, like I just want the you know the imam to prolongate the prayer, you know, like mm-hmm. don't cut it short, you know. A lot of times the imam he shuts, he's reading some surah and then he just cuts it short. I'm like, come on, yeah, imam, just add mm-hmm. add a little bit more verses, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was also excited this Ramadan to actually you know go to the masjid, but because of the coronavirus, you know, mm-hmm. it makes you even enjoy it that a week, you know. I was like, subhanAllah, mm-hmm. this time we're gonna be different, man. I'm gonna be feeling. I'm gonna be uh, understanding a lot, a little bit, not, not like a lot than I used to before from the Quran, and it's gonna make me, you know, understand a lot of the Quran. So it allow me even. To, it's gonna increase you know, khushu in the khushu your salat, mm-hmm. and it's also gonna help you, you know. I, I should like watch a lot of videos now from the scholars, 
and you know like just learning straight from them you know arabic is just different yeah. when you hear it example for example the duas right when i make dua subhanallah like if you're reading a dua in arabic it's way different than reading a translation no, like not. you actually feel you know like you actually feel what you're saying and i'll show i can actually you know sometimes i make dua in arabic you know and i just like kind of you know uh use this, you know, to come close to Allah. And then when I read the Quran, you know, the Quran translation is, is good, you know. I mean, that's just, a lot of scholars, they say the translation is like someone who's not Muslim. I saw some scholars who say that translation is for people who are not Muslims, you know, mm -hmm. to get them to learn. But as, as a Muslim, you should know the Arabic language, you know. Mm -hmm. That's like, um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, inna anzalna Qur'ana arabiya la allakum uh, taqilun, mm -hmm. you know. So for the apple, how can you understand the Quran without the Arabic? Like mm -hmm. we send down this for, in the Arabic language so that you can, you know, like what is the word for in arabic so you can understand with understand it, you consciously know? So, understand basically exactly so you know how can you understand the arabic language without uh, with the quran without the arabic language like mm -hmm. there's no way if you really want to understand it you have to uh understand the arabic language so you know i always tell a person to you know just stop yourself and ask yourself you know like I, we all want gender right if you want gender then you have to work for it because you're not going to get gender by doing nothing. It's not by saying, oh, I believe, you know, and I want to do this, but you don't actually put in the work. Because mm -hmm. that's just kalam. There's no amal. You have to put in the work for you to get to uh, gender. So you have to ask yourself, stop yourself and ask yourself, you know, uh, what is important for me? Do I want to go to gender or do I just want to, you know, follow this dunya and everything else that's inside of it? So once mm -hmm. you kind of tell yourself, you know, I want to get to gender. So for you to get to gender, you have to understand the deen. And for you to understand really the deen, you have to, you cannot understand it without the Arabic language. So that's why I would tell a person, you know, just understand that, you know, this is uh, something that you have to learn for you to get close to Allah and appreciate Iman. No, for sure. For sure, for sure. Tayyib, inshallah. So, uh, so we will conclude here. We will end the, the, the little interview here. And uh, I would like to see who is the real viewers. So as you guys already know, when we do uh, how, I learned, uh, how I Learned Arabic uh, episode, I tell you guys always to po to comment something so I see who's the real viewers who watch all the way until the end. So this time I want you guys to to uh, to comment just Andalus Institute, just Andalus Institute Arabic, Andalus Institute Arabic. Let's see who's the real viewers and um and uh, yeah, Tierno, uh, I appreciate your time to uh, share with us your your um your you know your ongoing journey because we didn't we're not finished yet with the uh, with the program but alhamdulillah when you that's the thing with uh, with the program is that on module number two when you start building a lot of vocabulary you start seeing that's when you start seeing the most clear progress but then later on you know we we finish uh, finding the the missing uh parts of the puzzle to make everything uh to make everything a hundred percent a hundred percent good so yeah, inshallah, tirno barakallah fiq for your time, and um, and I see you around, and assalamu alaikum to the viewers. Alaikum salam.